that's the deal with airplane peanuts. peanuts. Hey, everybody out there. Welcome back to everybody's favorite new <laughs> podcast. It's All You Garbage. That's right, gang. We're coming at you from the new studio, currently called Aunt Tootie's Basement. Working title. We're going to let one of you guys name the studio. Maybe. We're going to figure out a contest. <laughs> I feel like I'm on Shark Tank right now. I'm freaking the <laughs> out. Give it up for Tim Dillon, everybody. Hey, Thank Timmy. you. Let's go. He is the co-writer and director of the brand new movie, Fourth of July. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Louis C.K. Yeah. Buddy, give it up for Tom Segura, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, there you go. Kevin Ryan and H. Foley have built an empire of garbage while interviewing almost every single big-time comedian working today from their iconic studio in New York City. But the story of Are You Garbage's journey to the top was no overnight success. Seen today as an established cornerstone of the podcast scene, Kippy and Hank endured years of failed shows and COVID Zoom interviews before catching any sort of traction. And today we are honored to be joined by Kevin Ryan himself to talk more about their unlikely road to glory. All right, well, the introductions around here aren't nearly as good as they are on your show, but we are here today with the one and only CEO of Are You Garbage, Kevin Ryan. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. So you're fresh off a big trip to Ireland with the fellas. It looked like a lot of fun. What was your favorite part or the best story from that voyage? And is it true that H. Foley only packed three shirts for an 11 day trip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the big mystery of what clothes he actually brought. No one was a ever able to pin him down on the <laughs> amount of shirts because he said three. And then after like day two, he needed to do laundry. It was very confusing. <laughs> he's very he's very mysterious about his articles of clothing. But I think I saw three, maybe four T-shirts in the 12 day <laughs> trip. So I'm not sure. There was no no one moment kind of jumps out. It was just uh, it was a very fun uh kind of uh you know 12 days of running around dublin and ireland and drinking and having fun and just and just laughing with you know some of my best pals so it, it was a fantastic trip shout out to the homies uh, and bozos for making it happen yeah because like that was a patreon goal that was reached we've seen other ones like the roulette spin disney world what's the next big patreon uh benchmark i don't know we're trying to think of that now and it's kind of one of those problems where like the bigger they get, the means the next one's got to be fucking crazier, you yeah. know? So it's like, I don't know. And like in two years, we might up, end up in Mars or something just yeah. for the bit. I don't know. We have we have a couple things that we're, we're kicking around the idea. I've been pushing for uh, African safari, but I don't know Ooh. if that's I mean, I think just us idiots, uh, you know, on a on a truck in an African safari would be would be too funny so i don't know that's that's the big one but i don't know if i can sell that to the team well podcasting itself has led to the creation of multiple comedy duos from bad friends matt and shane we might be drunk tuesdays all that stuff where's it been like for you personally going through this amazing rise up with a partner by your side the whole time it's been very great it's been fortunate we're you know i always say we're so fortunate that we get to do it together we have been friends for you know i think since my second open mic or whatever wow. you know i met him he was in the he was doing comedy for a little bit longer than I was in the Philly scene. And um, we kind of hit it off right away. We kind of started working together in a very small capacity while we were in Philly. And then we moved to New York and we started podcasting together. We've been podcasting together for 10 years. This is our third podcast or maybe yeah. four. I think it's our third. It's the third iteration of it where it was a group of five of us. And then it was a group of three of us. And then it was a group. And then it was just me and him. You know, we've been kind of I, I always knew that we had a very good rapport together and the, and the comedy that we do make together is very, you know, is is, is very good. So it, it's been fantastic to, have, to get to do it with my best friend, you know, and now that we're yeah. on the road together, like our AYG live shows, we each do stand up and then we play AYG with the crowd. And it's like, as we get older, it's like, we're not stuck at, you know, the chuckle hut in a, you know, by ourselves right. for four days. It's like, we travel with a team of us and we laugh and it's just, it, it's, it's, it's been fantastic. Fantastic. Podcasting has, has let us to be able to do it the best possible way with your friends and having fun off stage while, you know, getting to do the live show. So it's it's been fantastic. And you've talked about before, Are You Garbage was not the first podcast that you guys tried to get started. But with you guys about to surpass 200,000 subs on YouTube, you're going on another big tour. What do you think about this podcast made it pop versus all the other ones that you tried? I don't know, man. I think like, you know, there's that there's they say like the 10,000 hours or like, you know, you, you have to get it's a skill. It's a 
you know, podcasting and is a skill aside from stand up comedy. It's, and some people are great at it by themselves. That's a skill that so few people have, like the Burr has it, like where you can just sit for an hour and make comedy. I think we were able to, we got very good at it. We got very good at it when no one was watching. The first podcast we were doing, we're getting, you know, 50 downloads and we were pumped that 50 50 people were listening to us or so. And I, I think one of the other things too is we didn't realize it that we we started humanizing bigger comics and they um, started telling stories that they've never told anywhere. Like if you, I think if you go on a bigger podcast, right, you go, all right, this is, I know these stories work. I want to get these out. This is a funny thing. I'm going to get here. And it's like, we don't want those stories. Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, like I always equate it just because it's, he's so big and it's such a big story, but it's like, I don't want Bert to tell the machine story. Not that he would, but like right. everyone knows that. I want to know, like, what do you do when you first wake up or where did you go? on vacation as a kid like those weird little things and we've learned that it leads to stories that they've never told before Mm. and memories that they haven't thought about in 15 years you see them remembering it in the moment they're not reciting it which is which i think is that's the thing that like everybody after they do the show of like it makes you think of stuff like people then start using that stuff to mine for stage they're like i didn't think about those memories and it made me think of this and it unlocked that like you know um it makes you work another muscle which is so was not intentional at all it was really just a game that me and Foley would play on long road trips when we were like going to do shows in like the central Pennsylvania. We'd be driving home at two 30 in the morning. And the first one we, that really ever worked was I was like, were you one of those weird families that drank milk with dinner? And he was like, yeah, I loved it. And I was like, you dirt bat. And like, that was the first iteration of it uh, in, in the, in car ride. So that's like what we would really do. Yeah. So I think it was, it's a, it's a multitude of things. And I think we had been in New York for so long, like working in the club. So we were very tight with a lot of the bigger comics. And then when the pandemic hit, we had launched like two weeks before the pandemic. I think we had two episodes out. Mm. I just remember talking to him. I'm like, man, we can't have another failed project. Like this is, you know, like I, I'm like, uh, if this doesn't work, I'm, you know, I'm, we're packing it in. I'm done. Yeah. We were able to get all these huge comics in the New York scene uh, because they were just sitting at home and they liked us, which would have taken us like two years to get them in studio. I, I think like I remember the the one week, I think it was like I think like the lineup went Norman Soder, Schultz, <laughs> Gillis, and then like someone. It was that like would an be ins- insane. Yeah. It was like an actual insane five run of episodes. I was like, what the hell's happening? Here? <laughs> yeah. And then like once you got a big guy, it was like, hey, I want to do it. I want to do it. Now, like it, it got to a point where like, you know, Bert texted me out of nowhere. I never even met him. He's yeah. like, hey, this is Bert. Can I do your show? And I was like, this is fucking sick. But I think it's a lot of things that it's it was a different. Uh, it was a different vehicle for comics to tell stories in. One, I think we've we've gotten good at the the sport of podcasting, and uh, yeah, it's like we really. I think it's also too is like it's genuinely who we are. Like even like I'm like yeah, I want to know these weird questions or like what's the most expensive dinner you've ever spent? You know what yeah. I mean? Like and we're. Yeah. Ve- we're very tacky when it comes to money because we don't know anything. So I'm like, you did what? Oh, holy <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Like we're yeah. children learning how to be adults. Yeah, I think that's very cool. And like you mentioned, you've had every major comedian on the podcast at this point, New York or not New York. But is there still any dream? Are you garbage guests still out there? Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a there's a bunch. You know, I would love Sebastian on the show, I think would be great just because like he's very thought out and detailed about like the little questions that we would ask. And he'd be like, yeah. ah, you know, like he would have a 10 minute answer on like, why, what kind of luggage do you use? And yeah, like, oh, yeah, go yeah. With, you know what I mean? So like yeah. he, I think he would be great. Um, I think Theo would be fantastic. And there's also like people we want to get comedic actors and stuff or like that okay. I think would be really good. A Paul Rudd or kind of those kind of people, oh, I think yeah. like would, you know, it's Jonah Hill or somebody I think would be mm-hmm. fantastic. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of dream guests, but you know, as a, dirtbag stand-up comedian from New York. I'm lucky enough that we've checked off a lot of our dream guests. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've got to sit with Louie and David Tell and, you know, it's so it's been it's been amazing. Oh, well, my next question is about the upcoming Through the Roof tour. Is there a favorite story from the past uh, tours that you have with the fellas on the road? Man, I think one of the biggest ones was it was the first time we went to L.A., 
and you know we're figuring out all yeah you know, we're like i said we're idiots so we're figuring out life let alone kind of like the success as it's happening and we rented a big nice airbnb i wanted to treat the boys we were on like a long run so I'm like we get to la i got us a real nice expensive house where i'm like all right guys like we have to cut costs other places to get this house but yeah. we're gonna have a pool it's gonna be awesome it's gonna you know like i, I want to do this for the team it's gonna be great there was a no smoking policy on the property and uh, fully smoked in the driveway and we got kicked out. But they have him on security camera footage, topless, like he's in his underwear. It's like two in the morning and he's smoking a cig. And I have started arguing with the guy. I'm like, buddy, we, I'm like, Foley, did you smoke on the property? And he's like, no. And then I'm like, hey, man, no one smoked on the property. We were walking out to the street. Like, now I'm getting <laughs> yeah. like aggravated. I'm like, you're accusing me of this shit, buddy. We paid you your money. Get off my back. What the fuck? I, I was I was like a lawyer. I was like, per your house rules, section one, <laughs> article two. And then I sent him all this shit and he's like quiet for like 10 minutes. And then just sends me a ring camera picture of Foley at three in the morning. Like, <laughs> like you know, as huge yeah. as he is, just cranking a heater. And uh, he's like, pack your bags, you're out in the morning. I was like, all right, fair enough. Yeah, uh, fair. But then to make the money back, I was like, Foley, we're making t-shirts out of this and selling this t-shirt. <laughs> we were with uh, Josh Potter at the comedy store when all this was happening. And I showed him the picture and he had my favorite line of all time. He was like, he's like, obesity is a huge epidemic in this country. That could be anybody. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you recently released a full YouTube special live from Philly. You and Foley both did half hour specials. David Tell has been talking a lot about why he made his special 37 minutes. What are your thoughts overall on specials getting shorter potentially? And how has it been working out the last few weeks with new material post special? New material has been brutal. <laughs> um, you know, it's not, but it's like, you know, it's uh, it, it kind of keeps you coming back. If you're, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of true, you know, people who are comics at heart love the struggle and like the finding that little line and all right, it makes it all worth it. You know, on a rainy night when you're going out to do a show for 15 people on a Wednesday night, you're like, this sucks, but then something works and you're like, ah, yeah. that's, that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing it, baby. I do think specials are trending to be shorter. You know, I think they need to be looked at in a little bit different of a light in the sense of like, at the end of the day, it is a commercial for you. And it's like, people are most more like, we do it with clips. It's like, if somebody wants to put up a joke that's a minute or, you know, 55 seconds, it's like, they'll probably trim it down to 25 seconds or whatever. They're, they're going to trim it to keep the people. And it's like, right. I think people are looking at specials the same way of like, oh, this is my first thing. I'm going to put it out and it's going to be a half hour. It's like, it is what it is. And I grew up watching the Comedy Central half hours. That's what everybody got first. I think like we forget about that. Like Everybody got half hours first and then the special. So I think it's a good calling card for people who at this point are like, I don't have much or any stand up out there. People who are trying to build their, you know, just take a guy who's trying to build the road or his YouTube page. It's like it's 30 minutes is a perfect thing for someone to invest time in and go like, oh, I can watch 15 or 20 minutes of this. And if I like it, I'll continue type thing rather than I think, you know, the hour is, is, is daunting. And, you know, I think everybody's attention spans are getting shorter. And, you know, to me, there's only, there's not that many people I want to watch an hour of. Like I love comedy. I'm a huge yeah. comedy nerd and a huge comedy fan. And it's still like, I mean, there's, you know, not everybody is watching the full hour. So I do two half hours in a year. I think it would be better. I, you know, I don't know, yeah. but I do see it shifting to the shorter formats for the non huge comics. You know what I mean? Like Louie and the Burrs and the Toms and like all those people are still always going to do hours. But I think for like newer comics who are putting out kind of their first stuff and trying to build a fan base, I think a half hour is a, is a great tool. So when you're touring clubs around the country, are you doing still hours on stage then but then just released the best no we so no so we do half hours on the road okay. so we go headline so our, our live show is we take tommy cassidy who's a buddy of ours he hosts and then toby the producer on the show he's also a comedian so he does some time he does like 10 15 minutes and then me and foley go out and we each do a half hour okay and then we close out the show like another half hour or so playing ayg with the crowd so like when the crowd gets there they all submit their questions their garbage questions and then we pull like you know the best whatever 15 or whatever you know and we then go at the car we're like okay where's steve at steve who you hear what you know and it's and then we read their yeah. question so it's a great way for the fans to engage because like they want to share their stories and we've gotten like some crazy stories out of these shows of like people like kind of not confessing but like sharing these like weird or darker stranger parts of their lives and it's yeah. like it's a cool moment and we're like yo thank you for the, you're fucking nuts and you're trash but thank you for sharing <laughs> that story you know so you've been 
been a part of the New York comedy scene like we're talking about for over a decade now. Obviously, a big thing is New York and LA guys relocating to Austin right now, becoming regulars at the mothership. Is that something you've ever considered doing? Are you an East Coast guy through and through? I, we definitely, I mean, like, you know, it's, we definitely talked about it, not in like, uh, we had just, you know, we built a, a big studio, the new studio that we moved to last year. We built a big studio and we signed a big lead. It's like a big space. So we're in the middle of that. I, and I mean, I think, I think the move to Austin is great for a lot of people. You know, it's just not where, um, we, like I have spent a decade building, uh, you know, myself up in the New York comedy scene. And it's like, we worked out, you know, we, we work the clubs here and it is home and it's close to my home in Philly. And I have a wife who lives here and has, yeah. it's, you know, and it's, it's always like, we can always go to Austin a couple times a year, which we did last year. I mean, I think we were in Austin like four or five times last year down to go do the pods, the kill Tony's your mom's house, do spots at the mothership when we do our shows when we go down there as well. So I think it's awesome that there's like a new third booming scene, you know, where a lot of people are going because it's like, it used to just be LA and New York. And now there's like a new third, cool, exciting thing, which is fantastic. So I think it's great. I think, I think a lot of comics can make the move down and really, you know, really hit the ground running and, and, and gain a lot of positive things from it but we're 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 new yorkers through and through i think for at least for the time being all right well my last question for you here today kevin and thank you so much again for your time before getting into stand-up you had a lot of weird different jobs which is the one that you miss the least that i miss the least um that's a good question i would have to say i did uh i was a laborer for a while for uh my family's construction company which involved digging ditches to expose plumbing pipes like sewer mains and shit like that and that was brutal that was like overnights where and i remember i remember even then i'm like i gotta figure something out this i can't i was out of shape you know what i mean i was like 250 pounds smoking cigarettes doing manual <laughs> labor i was in no physical or mental state to be doing that and uh that would be the one i would least like to go back with i worked a lot of shitty corporate jobs or cubicle jobs um but i always was able to cheat my way around and figure out where <laughs> I could kind of steal company time and what I could get away with, but you can't hide on a job. Right. Like you can't yeah. like the hole has to get dug and, and filled back in. Type <laughs> thing. So, so it's like, yeah. you know, there's no hiding, you know, especially when, when your family's uh, you know, yeah. the, the foreman, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? You fat <laughs> asshole. All right. Well, actually my real last question, or maybe it's just a statement more like we just completed a comedy podcast, March madness tournament here on joke world. And are you garbage defeated Chrissy chaos in the round of 32 Whoa. Then ran into a buzzsaw was defeated in the Sweet 16 by Matt and Shane. I know you're a sports ah, Come guy. on. <laughs> Who stands a chance? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people saying that you guys should have won the whole thing. So just putting that on your radar for next year. Are you that garbage means army? so much. That means a lot, dude. Yeah, I love I love hearing that. I love I love hearing that the how much, you know, it resonates with the with the listeners and how much they dig the show. It, it genuinely has changed our lives and, and it's fucking it never gets old to hear. Yeah, and no shame to lose into, you know, the Yukon of, of this season. Uh, either, not, so. you, what, I mean, uh, you, you got to bend the knee to the fucking to the big dogs. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm not a fucking idiot. All right, Kevin. Well, thank you again for your time. Anything else that the people should know about the upcoming tour, about the special, anything you want to throw out there? Yeah, like we like you said, both we both have specials on YouTube on the Are You Garbage page. Uh, they're both half hour specials. It's the kind of the half hours we toured with last year. And then uh, we're going back out on tour. We're going to be probably hitting like 40, 50 cities. We're doing theaters in a, in a good amount of these. We're doing Town Hall in New York. York. We just had a second show at the Beacon Theater in Boston. We have the Tampa uh, Tampa Theater coming up April 19th and then 20th. We're at a theater in Atlanta. So those tickets are available. Everything's available at areyougarbage.com. Check out the show if you haven't heard of it yet and appreciate the support. Guest spots from last week. The Joe Rogan Experience had Andrew Schultz and Neil Brennan on the show. Neil was also on Are You Garbage as well as Whiskey Ginger and Howie Mandel Does Stuff. Kill Tony this week was with Dave Attell and David Spade. Dave Attell also came on on your mom's house. We Might Be Drunk had Andrew Yang on the program. Matt and Shane, Bad Friends, and Flagrant did not have guests. Jessica Kearson was on the Tim Dillon Show. Two Bears, One Cave was Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. Taste Buds battled 80s Toys Part 3. And Bill Burr was on Tiger Belly. Have that you been to Asia? Yes. Okay, let's move on. Don't fucking talk to me like I went there and didn't learn anything. Mm. <laughs> That's how you just said that. Have, no, you, I... have you been to Asia? What part? Huh? <laughs> what part of Asia did you go to? I'm sorry. <laughs> I want that right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For something in my life. Yeah, okay, just go, right. What part? Well, yeah, I mean. That was my favorite. Um, if you went to, like, you know what I mean, 
Cambodia, it's different than, you know, Laos, it's different than... Is it? <laughs> Very good question. When you travel, a country's different? Yeah. <laughs> um, I went to Singapore. Okay. I went to Hong Kong, and I went to Mumbai, India. It's the only time I went to that part of the world, and I had a great time. Great. Despite but you never went to Tokyo? Despite the fact that a lot of people reminded me of you, other than that. <laughs> <laughs> you never went to... The, I, I, mean, I, I never went, and I never went where? Tokyo. So I haven't been there yet. Okay. Well, that's unbelievable to me. It's, it, it's actually insane. What, did they get a funny bone there or something? <laughs> <laughs> this past weekend with Theo Vaughn talked with Dustin Poirier. Brendan Saglow and Mike Feeney stopped by the Real Ass Podcast. Fahim Anwar was on Soder. Liz Mealy and Carmen Lynch visited Stavi's World. Jordan Jensen and Aaron Berg were the guests on Legion of Skanks. The Blocks Podcast had on David Cross. Jim Florentine was on The Way Back. Rick Glassman had Andrew Santino take his shoes off. David Jolly was on Rough Week. And Rain Wilson started a new podcast featuring Rick Glassman as guest number one. Rick was also the first guest on Bobby Altoff's new podcast podcast, which obviously blew up, so maybe this is a good omen for Dwight. As far as new stand-up specials that are either out right now or coming out soon, Neil Brennan Crazy Good is out right now on Netflix. Preacher Lawson, My Name is Preacher is up on his YouTube channel. Liz Mealy, Murder Sheets is also out on YouTube, along with Nathaniel McIntosh, Down With Tech, Don't Move by Peter Wong, and David Cross, Worst Daddy in the World. And of course, Dave Attell, Hot Cross Buns is still out on Netflix, along with Dimitri Martin, Dimitri Deconstruct. And a few specials in the works right now that will be coming out soon. Michael Linochi has his first YouTube special dropping April 16th. Jimmy Carr will be making his return to Netflix with Natural Born Killer also on the 16th. And Cat Williams will be streaming live from the Netflix is a Joke Festival May 4th. Netflix is also producing a live stream with John Mulaney for this festival, so I'm sure the second week of May we'll have lots to talk about while recapping Netflix is a Joke. In the meantime, you can look forward to another Netflix project coming out in 2025 a six-episode dark humor sitcom created and produced by Tom Segura. This project does not have a name yet, but is something Tom has been working towards for a long time. And this is the second comedian sitcom Netflix has recently invested in, after purchasing Shane Gillis's show, Tires, a few months back. If you haven't seen it yet, please check out our video detailing the first look at Dave Chappelle's brand new comedy club in Yellow Springs, Ohio. This is one of the coolest projects we've ever done so far, in my opinion, so it would mean a lot if you can check it out on the end screen right after this. Thanks for watching. Bad joke world. That's Bad joke world. And the world is WRLD. That's a great uh, YouTube channel, Joke World. Check it out.